Uh, I'll get to that later. Um, <laughs> so it's um, a thin wrapper around uh, the Connect SDK, as I said, and, um, and we think it's a lot of fun. It lets you develop some really cool, compelling, fun apps, and it can even be used in a productive way as well. Uh, this will be about building a game, but obviously you can do a lot more with the Connect than just build a game. You can build real world apps that are kind of helpful. Um, uh, earlier today, I heard about a uh, uh, Connect app developed for doctors so that they could rotate 3D models um, without having to touch anything with their hands during surgery. And there's, you know, the possibilities are basically limitless. It's up to your imagination. So the Connect is, uh, what Microsoft calls it, is the natural user interface. Um, and it allows you to interact with the computer in a way that uh, most people aren't used to. Um, it's just, you know, you are the controller, as the Xbox commercials say. Um, as I said, you can build games. Uh, if you have an existing application, it's a great way to add some interactivity to it. Um, you can build whole new apps based upon this paradigm. Uh, and I think, uh, as I said, the possibilities are endless. Uh this is, is there's a Kinect device, and there's a clear screen, and it projects onto the clear screen, and the Kinect device picks up what's going on below, and it allows you to interact with uh, the screen as you're looking at it with real world objects. So this is just a short clip of this, and there you can see the screen, and as we pan up, you can see the balls and the blocks that uh, the person can see, and they're just kind of you can just play with them. Um, it's really pretty amazing. And you know, they've got it working with solid objects and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, you can build the game, uh, but you can do some pretty amazing stuff with it too. So uh, we're really kind of interested in seeing what people can do, this, do with this, and we're kind of happy to be able to expose this to Python programmers. So uh, in a bit, I'll be running around and dancing around on the stage, but first let's cover uh, the prereqs that you need uh, to get started. Of course, you need a Kinect device, and at the end, we'll be giving some lucky person in the audience uh, one Kinect device, have a couple of people come up and play the game, and uh, the winner of the game, uh, which is a little, it's pretty much random, uh, will actually get the Kinect device that we have here. Uh, you need the Connect SDK. That's a download off of Microsoft's website. Uh, the URL is right there. You need PyConnect, which is up on pips, uh, PyPy, so you can just easy install or pip install it, uh, whichever one you like. It currently only supports Python 2.7, so Brett probably hates me, um, but we'll probably get it updated soon. Uh, optional, I'll be showing, uh, I'll be doing some coding in Python tools for Visual Studio. Uh, it's a great development environment on Windows, and this only runs on Windows. So, uh, you know, you could use that. You could use your favorite IDE, Emacs, VI, whatever. Uh, and I'll be showing Pygame as well, uh, which is a great way to, you know, do game programming on Python. And so, most of my demos will involve Pygame, at least the sophisticated ones. I have a few simple demos that will kind of show you the API uh, that will give you a good overview of what's going on. Um, so you don't need Pygame, and we'll see how far you can go without Pygame, too. So um, looking at uh, the API, there's a couple different broad areas that we support here. So there's the PyConnect NUI uh, package, and it includes skeleton tracking, the depth camera, and the video camera. Um, so you, know, you can draw skeletons. Um, the depth camera will let you sense how far someone is away from the camera as they move forward and backwards. Uh, and the video camera, you know, no big surprise what that is. Uh, PyConnect audio, the Connect actually has uh, multiple microphones on it. And so you can pick up what users are saying. Uh, if you have an Xbox, you might have seen this uh, where you can actually talk to your Xbox via your Connect, And it'll just, you know, you can tell it, go bing this if uh, you like that verb. Um, and we also have this other wind speech recognition API that's in here. 
This isn't specifically uh, tied to Pi Connect in any way. It's really just a wrapper around the Windows speech APIs, but it gives you a good way to interact with the Connect that's real easy. You can just set up a grammar XML file and then receive events back from it telling it that it recognized specific words. So uh, if you want to do speech recognition, it's a really easy way to get going with that. Um, so the uh, Pi Connect NUI package uh, has a runtime class, which is kind of your main entry point into the Connect. So it includes a skeleton engine, the depth screen, which will send you uh, new images from the depth camera, the video screen. Uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can interact with this API. Uh, one is entirely synchronous, where you're just pulling and asking for uh, new frames. Uh, and the other way is asynchronous, which is uh, where you're just receiving the events. Uh, the asynchronous way is really nice for doing game development, because typically in game development, you'll have a main game loop. And so you can just receive these events and then post them into your game loop, and then do all of your processing for your game logic in that main game loop as you uh, probably want to. So with that said, let's jump in and take a look at this. And there'll be lots of transitions here as I have to jump in front of the connect and sit back down, so please bear with me. So here I am in Python Tools for Visual Studio, and I'm just gonna get started in the REPL just to give you an idea of what the API looks like, so. No, I can't see it. <laughs> Much better. Now we can both see it. Okay, so uh, I mentioned the NUI package, so we can just bring that in here. And this is as simple as creating a runtime here. There's some flags that you can pass in that tell it what you're kind of interested in, but uh, the defaults will be good for us. And uh, we have the skeleton engine, and we can just go ahead and enable that. So we'll start being able to either pull or receive events from the skeleton engine. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start printing out all the skeletons that I'm getting back. So get the next frame. There's a little bit of word wrapping here that we can clean up. Um, and unfortunately, IntelliSense breaks down a little bit against this API, but If we have a skeleton that's tracked, we are just gonna go ahead and print that out. So, nothing happens. Uh, there's no skeletons that are <laughs> Tracking state, I believe. Okay, so, now nothing really happens and it's just waiting for a skeleton to appear. So if I walk in front of the connect, we'll see it caught me. Um, and we can see it started dumping a ton of skeletons out. And we can see it's, it's trapped. So that is kind of all it takes to get going with the skeleton track. Right, so it's not a whole lot of code. It's pretty simple and straightforward and uh, kind of cool. So you can see here uh, on the skeleton tracking, we get some positional information and all that stuff. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and abort this and let me then quickly show you the other way that you can actually do this, the asynchronous method. So again, we're gonna scroll up, we're gonna import NUI. Uh, this time I'm going to import time as well. Uh, I probably don't need it. We want the connect runtime. Enable the skeleton engine. And we have a frame ready event. Uh, 
and we're just going to pass this function in as a callback here. And we will just go ahead and sleep for a very long time. And this is going to do the exact same thing as before, but this time it's through this asynchronous um, callback mechanism. So this is much better for kind of the game development that you want to do. And don't worry, that's going to be kind of the last time that I'm actually typing in live code. Uh, so that's the basic API. Um, switching, yeah, this is going to be painful. Switching back to my slides. There we go, slides. So that's the skeleton engine. I'll show you the depth stream, the video stream in a bit. Um, but I think, uh, you know, things are going so smoothly, I will go ahead and switch to the awesome audio, the awesome audio demo next, um, which will uh, hopefully not fail me. So um, the audio API is kind of equally simple uh, compared to uh, the other APIs. Um, so here we have, uh, the audio API without me typing it in. So it's very similar to before. Uh, we're bringing in uh, both the NUI package and the audio package and the wind speech recognition package. We can just go ahead and create a connect audio source, uh, create the speech recognition engine. We can start the audio source, which is actually just going to return a file back to us. And we can just read from that file. It's just PCM 16-bit audio. Um, and so if you had another file, you could just open that file with Python and call set input to audio file with the normal file object, do speech recognition against that using the recognition APIs. Uh, in this case, we're just going to have the streaming of the microphone from the file going on. We'll load the grammar and we'll just start recognizing. And so as we go through each word, we're going to, uh, as, as it recognizes each word, it'll go ahead and print it out. So we're set to the audio demo. I'll go ahead and start that. And my REPL window still has my connect device running, so I'm going to reset that. And it's picked up the connect. It's recognizing. So I can say up, down, left, right, up, pike on Argentina. Icon Argentina. There we go. These are always a little, uh, a little flaky. Apparently, applause sounds like left. <laughs> Who would have thought? Um, okay. So, uh, looking at some of the, uh, going back to some of the uh, other APIs. Um, we saw kind of the basic connect uh, API, and this is kind of an extended example of that, except for this is going to be a console application. Um, and so, you know, this is the same thing that I typed into the REPL before, basically, where we're enabling the skeleton engine, we're continuously getting the next frame, uh, except for now I'm actually going to start doing something a little more interesting, where I'm actually taking uh, the points that I'm getting back from the skeleton here, and I'm mapping them into a 80 by 25 console window in order to draw my hands onto the console screen. Uh, so if I come into here and go ahead and set my connect console as the startup here and hit F5. And we'll see how this works with the microphone. You can see I can move, move my hands around and it tracks them. So uh, 
you know, getting a little more creative here, building up uh, using the APIs, and we're actually rendering something. So the interesting thing here uh, to look at is that we're using this uh, skeleton to depth image API, which is part of the Connect API. And what this lets you do is uh, take a position from the skeleton and map it into a 2D space, which is what you're probably going to want to do when you're rendering a skeleton onto the screen, or uh, if you want to kind of, you know, figure out where things are going. Uh, try to interact with objects in the world and so on. So uh, that's a real simple example. We're tracking the hands and we can take that same example and kind of extend it a little bit. Uh, there's a bunch of goo in here that doesn't really matter too much. It's rendering and writing to the console. But um, here is a little more complicated example. It's doing the same thing again. So we can come down here and we can see the same basic setup where, uh, again, we're pulling for frames. We're looking at the skeleton tracking state. Once we have a, a skeleton that's actually being tracked, uh, we go ahead and we actually spin off a new thread. And we'll just update that new thread as, uh, as we get new skeleton requests. And that thread will handle drawing uh, a skeleton. Uh, and again, that skeleton is going to be on the console, just to make things really, really fun. So here we go. Um, I can uh, come back and <laughs> any other requests? Tango. <laughs> I don't know Tango. Um, so here I believe I'm drawing again in a darker color. So uh, one thing about the Connect is it doesn't actually give you APIs that are going to uh, re-recognize a player. So as I leave its field of vision, um, it's going to forget about me. And as I re-enter it, I'm going to show up again. And here I am, uh, picked up as a new player in a different color. So this is something that's left to you to figure out how to figure out whether someone is the same player or not. You can do various uh, things with the video camera to look at their face or whatever. Um, and so I can just keep doing this and keep showing up in a new color. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. Uh, and just to show you, uh, we can break into the debugger here. And kind of this is what's going on. So I have one thread here, which is my main thread, uh, which is just sitting in the module waiting for those frame events. And then I have five other threads there, which are my user threads. So as I entered and left the screen, um, and kind of one of those, a uh, few of those are waiting for the player to reappear, and a couple of those are still just waiting for skeletons to show right back up. So um, this is kind of a way to, a crazy way, multi-threading, uh, rendering different skeletons. You probably wouldn't do your game like this, but it's kind of fun anyway. Uh, the console way is the only way I could think of to, uh, get too crazy, so. Um, okay, so we talked about uh, the cameras as well. Um, and so I'd like to show you that in action a little bit. And so this is actually using Pygame now um, in order to do the rendering instead of something as silly as a console game. Uh, in this case, here we have the depth camera. So I can tell kind of how far I am and how close I am. You can see that I'm rendering my skeleton on top of this. And I can come over here and I can switch to the video camera. And we get the same, same nice tracking uh, drawing on top of it, um, all using Pygame. So uh, for this, uh, we can take a look at the code here real quick. Let's. And you'll see that it's, it's kind of much in the same style here. So this is actually using the asynchronous APIs now instead of the polling because we actually have a proper game event here. And so you can see I'm just going through here and we have different events. So one of these is an event that I've defi defined, which is the connect event. And when we receive that, we run through and process and draw the skeletons and then update the screen. 
there's key handling, which shouldn't be too surprising. Um, but uh, the fun stuff is the asynchronous API, which we can actually see here. So uh, we have the skeleton frame ready event, and this is going to do post frame, which is right up above. And that's just going to take the skeletons, post them back into my game loop, and let me process them there. And likewise, we're hooking the asynchronous depth frame ready and video frame ready. And so as we get those, uh, depending on which mode we're in, whether we're in uh, the mode to draw the depth frames or the video frames, we'll just go ahead and copy those bits onto uh, the surface that Pygame gives us. So it's pretty simple. Um, you know, there isn't a whole lot of code here. Kind of the most involved thing is actually drawing the skeleton, which is just, you know, drawing a bunch of lines inside of Pygame. So even that isn't too complicated. So, you know, again, it's really pretty easy to get started with this stuff and kind of do some fun stuff. I'm kind of scared to look at my slides again. <laughs> um, and then uh, one other fun little thing that the Connect has is, uh, and this may be actually kind of difficult to see, but you can actually move the camera as well. So uh, if you notice that a person is going outside of the frame of view, uh, you could adjust the camera so it's down or up. And so this shows you how to do that. Again, it's really pretty simple. There's just a Kinect camera device here. And as you can watch, the Kinect is actually moving down right now. And it'll start moving back up. But uh, there's just a little elevation property on here. And you can adjust it to whatever you want and uh, move the camera up and down. It doesn't go left or right, just up and down. So uh, that's kind of a uh, little fun aspect of it, and again, really pretty simple to use. And I will venture back to my slides at this point. So we saw the audio stream, we saw the speech recognition with the set input to audio file and the load grammar and the recognition. Again, the audio, uh, just like um, the video and the skeleton tracking, there's an async API in addition to the synchronous API. Um, so uh, if you are writing a real game with an event loop and so on, uh, that's a good way to work with it, and you can hook it too. Um, finally, uh, <laughs> wonderful. At least it's not my code. Uh, we have a full game here, uh, which is not Pi Game Demo, which we always already saw. It's game. So this is much more complicated, but it's building on the same concepts that we saw before. So we have uh, our main event loop here, uh, where we're waiting for, get for events. We have the connect event, just like we saw before. Um, but uh, we also have tons of random physics code. Uh, we're using Pygame here again. So we're using sprites and doing collisions. And so the game, when you'll see it in a second, there'll be balls bouncing around. They have to collide and have the right physics. And there's blocks. And uh, it's going to use the camera. And so uh, I'm going to do something horrible. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, and uh, so it's a bunch of code. As you can see, this is much bigger than the other files. All, all told, it's 781 lines of code. But most of this code is actually just all physics code uh, to deal with the actual game logic. And you know, there isn't a whole lot to deal with the connect because it's pretty simple to use. So I'm going to go ahead and start this and show you the game. Uh, And this is what the game looks like. So if I step into its view here, you can see it's tracking my head there in the middle. Um, and we have the balls bouncing around. And my hands are controlling uh, the paddles along the left and the right hand sides. Uh, so 
I can use these paddles to hit the balls. So this is kind of like a cross between Pong and Breakout. Uh, and I tell you this is probably the world's worst game in the world, um, as we'll see in a minute when people actually try to play it. Um, but so the way this game works is uh, when the balls hit your paddle, uh, once the game starts, which happens when I press space, uh, the ball will change your color. And then you can hit blocks, and the blocks will change your color. And then you hit the blocks again with the ball that's your color, and you get points. Uh, you can kind of drill your way into the center and start hitting your opponent's head. Uh, same thing happens, it changes your color. And uh, then you get tons of points if you keep hitting their head. So uh, kind of the goal here is to, uh, you know, keep the balls your color, uh, hit the balls. It's a little challenging, actually. Uh, there's a lot of them, and it gets crazy. So, um, but it's kind of fun. So, um, are there any volunteers? Anyone? You had your hand up first, and how about you? It's your chance to win a Kinect. Now, I do have to warn you, uh, the Kinect came from the US, so it's kind of a, a broken gift, if you will, and uh, that it has a US power supply. Um, so it'll need an adapter, which is very unfortunate. But uh, an adapter is cheaper than a Kinect, so. OK, so I will restart this. And if you guys can come up, um, who wants to be red? OK, come up and type your name in. There's, there's scores. It's tracked. You'll go down in history. And go ahead and type in your name. OK, so we're going to play a practice round first. Okay. All right, just so that you can get a feel for it and know what's going on. Um, so first thing is to kind of, uh, you'll want to be on the right side of the connect. And so we got both of you tracked. You're both, you're both famous and on screen. Uh, or are you? Uh, we're missing you. Uh, you might need to step to the right. <laughs> you should be yellow. Step to your right. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so I'm going to press space. The game's going to begin. Practice round. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Red's winning. Red's really winning. Come on, yellow. David, you're way behind. Deirisus? Deirisus? I feel like I mangled that. Um, Deirisus, you're, you're really? Oh, oh, David's starting to catch up. 208, 228, uh-oh. Deirisus, watch out. 252, uh-oh. David's exposed, though, so if you can hit his head, turn him red. Look at all those yellow balls. Come on. You got to knock some of those. Oh, 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 that's, that hurts. Oh, bam, bam, all those yellows. You need to knock a ball in there. Oh, both your heads are colored. It's getting close, but uh, I think David's going to win. I think he has it, unless... Uh, Unless Deirisus starts pounding Red's head, Yellow's head. <laughs> and the game's going to be over when the last block goes away, so we're getting close, we're getting close. David's totally winning. <laughs> Good thing this is just the practice round. Oh, oh. way to go, David. Uh, you did apparently not beat Brett's score, though. So Brett is still the all-time leader of <laughs> Breakout Pong. <laughs> oh, but the game got the winner wrong. The game got the winner wrong. Whoops. OK, let's try again for real. You guys got a feel for the game? Yeah, sure. You think you're going to do better? Hopefully. OK. <laughs> the challenge is on. I'm missing an E, aren't I? Is that right? Yeah. 
Okay, so we need to get both sides tracked. There we go. And the game begins. DRSS is doing much better this time, but it's still a close game. David, you're behind. I guess that was just beginner's luck. Ooh, ooh, look at that red. Oh, oh. David, that's gotta hurt. Uh, oh, 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 but. Tiresis's head is yellow now. That's not good. Ooh, 100 points to David. Tiresis has to get rid of those blocks soon. Oh, but both of your heads are exposed, I guess, so it doesn't matter too much. But he's winning. He's winning. It's almost over. Oh, and Tiresis wins. Congratulations. Okay, so the world's lamest game. <laughs> but you can have fun building your own incredibly lame game, and that's what's so cool about this. Uh, so, um, you know, finally wrapping up, we have some cool things in here. What game is not complete without leaderboards? You know, we all want to compete with our friends, and we all want to be at the top of those leaderboards. So kind of one cool thing in here is uh, we're using Azure here uh, to upload those leaderboards. They're all on the internet for you to look at. You're famous. Uh, let's not look at CNN. Let's refresh these leaderboards. You can go and look at these anytime you want and show how awesome you are or not. So Brett, still the all-time champion, apparently. Uh, but Deirsa setting the number two score ever. So that's great. Uh, PyConnect scores.azurewebsites.net if you want to see it yourself. Um, and that was created using Python tools for Visual Studio, just like the rest of the demo has shown. Uh, and it's a Django application. Uh, so this is kind of cool. Um, bringing all of these cool Python things together. So back to slides. Let's see how this, oh, PowerPoint crashed. That's right. <laughs> So wrapping up, um, the main thing here is about the feature. Uh, so uh, currently, the PyConnect libraries are targeting uh, 1.5 of the Connect SDK. Um, the Connect SDK released 1.6 uh, just last month. And so we'll have an update coming out soon, which lets you do even more than what I showed you there. Uh, so there's infrared camera access coming. Uh, some extended depth so that you can see people farther away. There's some new color settings so you can get uh, bare image formats. Um, and you can tweak some of the color settings as well. The Kinect apparently has an accelerometer in it. Um, I have no clue why they would have added that. Seems like an awfully stationary device. But uh, now you have access to that uh, if you want to shake your Kinect around or something. Uh, there's some new coordinate mapping APIs so that you can take skeletons and map them into the color space and all sorts of uh, fun stuff like that so that you can kind of see uh, a relationship between the camera and the skeleton in a better way and do some better rendering. And it even works in a VM, so, uh, which seems kind of crazy to me, but uh, somehow you plug it in and it goes straight through to the VM. So uh, here's some links to help you get started. Uh, there's the Connect SDK, uh, which you'll need to download and get started. Again, you can pip install the PyConnect library itself. Um, and uh, up on the PyTools website, we have all of the slides, we have all of the demos that I just showed, um, and uh, that's about it. Any questions? Brett. What license is it under? Uh, right now it's under some weird, um, it's, it's basically, so the source code is all available, but it's uh, under the connect, the same license as the Connect SDK, basically, uh, which is a little bit weird. Yes, yes, all the source code's available. Yes? Is there a way to activate the camera, or you need the Connect? 
Um, so the Connect 1.6 SDK includes some, the question was, is there a way to act, uh, simulate the camera? Yeah, uh, the Connect SDK has some recording and playback facilities in 1.6. Um, I actually haven't tried them myself, so I don't know uh, how will they work with uh, the Pi Connect stuff, but um, that's just recording and playing back. Uh, I don't know if there's, you know, that's as close as you can get as far as I know. I don't think you can take another camera and have it simulate it. It certainly wouldn't have the skeleton tracking or anything like that. Yes? Can I use uh, PyConnect with, without Microsoft Visual Studio? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I, so, you know, I spend most of my time working on Microsoft uh, Python tools for Visual Studio, and so I'm used to that IDE, and it is useful to show this stuff off, uh, but it's absolutely not required at all. Anyone else? <coughs> yes? Does it work on anything besides Windows? No. The question was, does it work on anything besides Windows? And no, it doesn't. It depends upon the Connect SDK. Uh, if someone were to go and re-implement the C++ side of the Connect SDK somewhere, presumably it would work just fine there. But um, that's probably, I mean, there's the open NI effort, but I don't know that they have the same API. So the question is, what about the performance? Uh, the comparison is to OpenCV, and there's some performance problems there. Uh, so you know, you don't want your inner loop to be in Python for a lot of things. So you could see with kind of the game where we're just doing some simple physics simulations, that works great. Uh, if you want to start doing something like a green screen, where you're looking for uh, just the people in the foreground uh, with the camera, which you can do that, um, and then taking all of the background and mapping that out, well, now you're kind of looping over every single pixel. And so doing that in Python is actually pretty slow. Uh, on my machine at work, I got, I think, around 12 frames per second doing that, um, which is not a fun interactive experience. But uh, you can take that and, you know, move those inner loops into uh, C code, or you could potentially look at leveraging something like NumPy or SciPy or something like that. No more questions? All right. Thanks, everyone.